this vehicle uh, they scan it already with generic scanner and I believe uh, I don't know someone came over or they have a scanner but they didn't want to throw parts based on the code on the diagnostic trouble code so at that time they pay me to do a diagnostic and I'll bring you along with you guys with me so we're gonna diagnostic this together then Uh, welcome to the channel uh, We're gonna be making a video here of a Chevrolet S10 with engine 4.3 uh, Customer concern is the vehicle stalled during driving and Gonna duplicate the condition at this point <clears throat> It's very low mile is this vehicle Okay, we have crank no start Security light come on and goes off nice service engine light coming on first step we're gonna go through the only thing i have done on this vehicle is um scan for cause but i wanted to show you something here okay how we're gonna go through this um i'm gonna go throughout um right here so this is my scanning sorry for the glare Got a lot of glare here let me look for a place where we have less glare and the only code I have is that one P0102 mass airflow sensor circuit low frequency okay the question now is can the mass airflow sensor cause a crank to start yes what, what, what can we do well we can unplug it because these vehicles they have a strategy if I unplug it it should start if that's the problem I don't believe it's the problem on this vehicle however we're gonna go through the steps of um, since we have a crank no start to figure out what uh, is missing fuel spark what okay so we're gonna go under the hood and do some testing well prior going under the hood um, I wanted to check the freeze frame data for this vehicle and uh, that's I don't believe, like I said, this one will cause uh, a trunk no start. However, you know, we can, uh, like I said, simple unplug the mass airflow sensor and crank it. And uh, there's the code, that's the diagnostic trouble code. So we click a freeze frame data and uh, we're gonna be checking here, look at here. The brake, the brake pedal was applied at that moment. I think which was when the vehicle was stalling, pretty much, because the customer says stall, thousand RPMs. That's what the computer was looking at. RPM, map sensor, and uh, it was reporting 31 gram per second. However, the vehicle speed was 40 miles per hour. The TPS was at 23 percent. Basically, the release. I think it was released. Um, I don't think it is. It is gonna be a um, mass airflow sensor. Still gonna do some testing, um, and <clears throat> we're gonna go through find out what's missing: spark or um, fuel. Crank it now and check for spark. Okay, thank you. Now we're gonna substitute the fuel supplement. We have a spark, so now we're moving to fuel. Um, connect back the master flow sensor here. And I'm gonna substitute the fuel here. And find out if we're missing fuel. I remove the PCV valve. Okay, crank it. Huh. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, so we're missing fuel. So we're gonna check a fuel pressure and the fuel pump uh, powers and ground. I have, I have connected a fuel pressure gauge uh, and we're gonna check for the fuel pressure now. First, we can hear probably the fuel pump, the sound. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it when I turn on the key. Okay, In the first two seconds is activate. So now, let me connect the fuel pressure gauge, bring it down inside here, and I'm going to crank the vehicle. Okay, key on. Gonna crank it now. You can see the max you can build is like about 20 psi. Very low fuel pressure. So now the specifications are telling me here should be in between. Key on engine off fuel pressure should be about 6 to 65 psi. So we only have 20. At this point, I gotta go and check powers and grounds to the fuel pump. That's the next step. Because we are only building about 20 psi. So barely nothing. Okay. So we're gonna be testing the mass airflow sensor now. I have connected here to ground. Battery voltage is kind of low right now, 11.7. Um, uh, so we're gonna be checking power first and ground, okay? Power. Ground. And signal. Okay, very easy. We go here. We just need to make contact. And the screen here. <clears throat> we drop the voltage to even 5 volts I think no I gotta drop it to 10 and we have signal so the wire is in good condition if we crank it you know that the frequency should increase but we don't have a problem with this I just wanted to show how to check the mass airflow sensor power ground and signal I will have connected the scope here um, on this channel. I'm gonna be measuring in amps and I'm gonna be connecting in the frame rail here with. I got a hand tech current ramp. Let's see, focus. Let's see, this one can focus here, focus there. Okay, I have it on the one millivolt. It will at equal to 10 milliamps mod and I'm connected here on this wire GM has always given us that color for the fuel pump gray color so I connected that without wiring diagram and there's the fuel filter I'm gonna crank it and verify powers and ground throughout this if I have a low amps I will have to physically check powers and ground but if I don't have it if I have a good amperage, that means I should, right there, and stop the capture. Uh oh, where is it? Let me see. Let me see here. I'm gonna see if I, where is that capture? Did I, was I recording or what? Okay, let me let me redo it again. We're gonna do it again. Right there. Uh, crank it. I'm gonna go here and crank it. Stop it. Right there. So we're gonna analyze. Uh, 
this area. We're gonna analyze this area here. Zoom on it. Right there. So basically, let me see if we another area here. I'm gonna analyze this area here. Basically about uh, four amps. And you know the fuel pump activity looks like okay so I believe this one is gonna have some check valve issue internal because we're building up about four amps so to be able to fill uh, to build four amps uh, we will we, we have good powers and grounds I, I don't feel the need to go and check uh, powers and grounds since we already did it throughout the amperage you know we go through ohms law uh, if we have a um, good power good ground so we can build and we need a fuel pressure resistance to build up a, a pressure so we have enough um uh excuse me we need a new uh, fuel pressure too to to build up some resistance and um and build up a um uh amperage so we have good amperage and i don't have to go and check powers and ground i think we're done there another variable we're gonna have to count on is you know fuel pressure gauge is showing we have um half of the tank Okay, so fuel pump. I am here under the truck. What caught my attention is, if we see that one, it says it's Elko fuel filter. So it looks to me like probably they have never replaced that one. <clears throat> and as we can see on the amperage away from uh, electrical, didn't look like the fuel pump was bad. And the sound is like a whining noise. I don't know if that one got restriction Anyway, the pump is messed up already. However, after I'm replacing the fuel filter, I got a new one here. If I have an adapter, we're gonna do a deadhead pump um, test. Find out how much is the maximum uh, pressure the pump can develop. I did not find any adapter to do a uh, to seal the system and do a deadhead pump test. I found this one, but still, you know, this one was only going to replace the filter and took the sample here. Uh, I couldn't. So for that, people were thinking, why you didn't just replace the fuel filter? Because yeah, it was plugged for sure. It was plugged. However, we can see there is a new filter in place, and it was plugged. And I heard the pump. The winding of the pump so that one already damaged the pump and we're still gonna crank it and find out you know if uh, we got fuel pressure prime the system prime the system because we have a new pump i mean like a new uh, fuel filter get nothing okay so take a look at this here so that one is about half tank so I will have to siphon that one or take some the fuel out of the gas tank because I'm working myself. So uh, we're gonna proceed to that one and then replace the fuel pump. I do have connected here, disconnected this hose, the outlet, and I have uh, connected this hose on the outlet of the fuel filter to the container. And we're gonna go through the skinner and command the skinner to turn on the fuel pump since we have that function. So we, we wanted to um, use it and that way we don't siphon the fuel. So I'm gonna be here, and I am on the main screen here. No, I think it is, no, it's not the main screen. Let me go here back, right there. So we're gonna go to actuation test, uh, engine output controls and fuel pump. Okay, hang on, gonna turn on the pump. I hear the pump for a little bit, but it stopped after like three seconds. 
So basically it's saying on, oh, but the, it's not working. The pump is not working. So we're gonna gotta find out another way to probably manually turn on the pump. Because it didn't work. So let me look at the wiring diagram and we're gonna go through that one. Find out what other way we can use to turn on this pump. With uh, the new fuel pump, there are coming some uh, connectors on it, new connector. As we can see, this is coming in line and they are sending the instruction here inside what color, with what color to splice them. The reason is because they have a TSB on this one related to a false connection in between the fuel pump connector and the harness connector. So this is something very important we have to do. So do the splicing on this too. Oh, I just completed doing the splicing here. So I use this, the butane, to heat it up this. And we can see here, got the connection. So this is the new connection for the fuel pump. This was the old connection. The one uh, they want we to update. And here are the instructions how to splice the, 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 the wires, the color with color. You can see here the connections, the O pump, what type of connection it has, like a four pins. And this one is the four pin, but it's in this um, in line here. Okay, that's the difference. Well, I have here um, the data pull up related to master flow sensor. So I got RPM here, and we have here the TPS sensor. We, we are at idle, and this sensor is a digital sensor. So the signal that produces a digital um, signal in frequency, we can see the frequency here at idle. We are about 5.1 uh, gram per second. It's 4.3, the engine size. Uh, that's a good one uh, and we see that one I uh, will accelerate uh, 2500 rpm and we're gonna watch uh, how the frequency change and we're gonna compare it to a table also I got fuel trim here because we did some fuel related repairs so I wanted to make sure all of them are in in fuel control and we are let me go 2500 rpm and um, let me stabilize. It's about 2,500 right there. And um, look at here, fuel control. We're in fuel, good fuel control. Fuel trim, long term. All of them are in fuel control. About 18 gram per second, 4,000 uh, hertz. We're gonna do a snap here we have to go about 8,000 Hertz. Yeah, 8,500. So that proves uh, the master flow sensor is in good condition. So the computer just was uh, pretty much uh, throw a false code because in the logic, it saw RPM when the vehicle was stalling, during the vehicle was stalling, it saw RPM, speed, vehicle speed, and it didn't see airflow. So probably the, the driver was pressing on the TPS. If the TPS is open, so that is a correlation there. Uh, in between how it can be open, we don't have ground per second, but we, should, we still got RPM. So this vehicle didn't have any issue, doesn't have any issue with the mass airflow sensor. So this confirmed the repair.